everyone, this is Mary, your Mary Reads. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video, as you have already understood from the name, is going to be about book banning in Germany. Um, in one of my previous videos about books that were banned in Soviet Union, um, somebody said that I should make the uh, video about books that were banned in uh, Nazi Germany. And I just decided that I am very interested in book burnings. I think it's a very serious and very sad topic. Uh, it's very significant for the culture. And I decided to make a video about that. So today we're going to have a quick overview of book burning in Nazi Germany that happened in 1933. And please let me know if you want to know more about it and I can make a second part with more details, more information. Um, and maybe if you know any interesting facts about that time and what book burning meant to the society. So book burnings were a campaign by German student union that kind of merged all the student committees of the German universities. So the first book burning happened in 1933 and they kept going through Germany and Austria. So it was not just a one-time event. There were many different uh, towns and cities that took part in book burning and it was a nationwide event. Of course, not any random books were burned. The only books that were targeted were those that contradicted the ideology of Nazism. So some of the examples of books that were burned were communist books, liberal books, anarchist books. So any ideology that opposed Nazism. A lot of books of specific authors were burned. And I found it very, very interesting because there were some authors that I found that I didn't think would qualify for burning. So, for example, the French author whose books were burned was Victor Hugo. Then, if we're talking about American authors, it was Theodore Dreiser, uh, Francis Scott Fitzgerald, um, Ernest Hemingway, Jack London. These were the authors whose books were also burned in Nazi Germany. Books of British authors were also burned, and those authors were Oscar Wilde, James Joyce, and Aldous Huxley. Though Aldous Huxley, I have to say, I understand why. Um, we talked about the books that were banned in Soviet Union and Aldous Huxley obviously was banned there too, just because we're talking about dystopian novels. And I would say that this is one of the authors who I understand why they were banned. Um, not that I obviously agree with it, but I understand, I see the reasons. Victor Hugo, for example, I did not understand at first. I didn't understand why his books were burned as well. And if we're talking about Russian authors, of course, Nabokov, then Tolstoy, uh, Dostoevsky, uh, Isaac Babel, who was a Jewish author, if I am not mistaken. And any Jewish author, no matter what... Um, genre, what type of literature they wrote, were banned as well. Now, let's talk about the campaign itself. In 1933, the main office of press and propaganda started a nationwide action against the un-German spirit. It was supposed to be a kind of process of cleansing from unnecessary knowledge and information. The German Student Union asked the Ministry of Propaganda for support, and this support included um, the Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, be a main speaker in one of the events in Berlin. The German Student Union also supplied press with multiple articles that would promote this action. Um, they would ask for a broadcast on radio. They would invite uh, well-known Nazis to speak during certain events. And this way they were trying to kind of um, reach audiences of different kinds. 
The next day, Student Union also published the 12th thesis, which was a document that encouraged German university students to restore the traditional aspects of German culture. In early May 1933, soon after those 12 theses were published, an organized attack was made on the Institute of Sex Research. Their library included works on sexuality and other related matters. They also had a lot of photographs, a lot of documents about also the uh, sex research. A lot of the materials were taken from the library of this institute and later burned in one of the first book burnings. Book burnings were a very loud and proud event. Uh, people were dancing, chanting, there was live music. Of course, there was the process of book burning itself. There were speakers who spoke um, on these events and again, uh, Joseph Goebbels, the uh, Minister of Propaganda, spoke to people in Berlin and then his uh, speech was uh, put on the radio. So in the end, about 40,000 people heard that speech. Thousands of volumes were burned. This was an uncompromising nationwide censorship. And Joseph Goebbels in his speech said, no to decadence and moral corruption. Yes to decency and morality in family and state. What's more, Goebbels referred to the authors of burned books as intellectual filth. Book burnings became so popular that they happened in 34 university towns all over Germany. They were a huge success. They were even covered in newspapers and a lot of information about them was discussed on radios, again in newspapers, and just among people. Libraries were supposed to get rid of all the unwanted, unnecessary books and be filled with books that stood up to Hitler's standards. Now, let's talk about some of the categories of books that were burned. We already discussed some of the authors. Again, it was all the Jewish authors, no matter what genre and what type of literature they wrote. It was some of the Russian authors like Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Nabokov. It was English authors like Oscar Wilde, James Joyce and Aldous Huxley. American authors like Theodore Dreiser and Francis Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, again, Victor Hugo, uh, the French author, and many, many more. Uh, there were many more names in that list. But now let's discuss the specific categories of books that were supposed to be burned. The first category is all the books that were degrading German purity. Anything that could cause any sort of suspicion or even little thought um, were supposed to be burned. The next category was very interesting. I did not expect that to be there and I think it explains why Tolstoy's books uh, were on the list of those books that were supposed to be burned. Um, I'm not sure about Victor Hugo, probably, but I'm not sure if he goes under this specific category. This group of books was popular entertainment literature that showed life in an unrealistic manner. So basically it was uh, the upper class view of life that was not supposed to be translated into the books. And um, these books that showed this type of life were supposed to be burned. Again, of course, writings on sexuality and sexual education. Next, as we said before, any literature that had some liberal or democratic tendencies. Those books were not supposed to be in the libraries. They were supposed to be gotten rid of. Next category was the books by traitors, immigrants, or foreign authors that could attack the new Germany. And finally, any historical writings that could attack a new Germany. Of course, there were a bunch more categories of books that were supposed to be gotten rid of and burned, but I think I mentioned some of the most important ones and some of the biggest categories that had the most influence. This was, of course, a huge cultural and historical disaster. A lot of important materials were lost, but hopefully not all of them were lost forever. Uh, and if you want to hear more about it, just let me know and I 
I will be happy to make a second part of this video and discuss book burnings um, a little bit deeper and a little bit more. Please let me know if you know any interesting facts about book burnings and thank you for being with me today and watching this video. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.